I'm aware of the fact that some of the previous comparative videos were a bit long, so I'm going to try and record them in kind of very short, bite-sized uh, videos going forward. So I wanted to just talk very quickly about this uh, the team and issue mode. Um, a lot of people are preparing this mode, and I just wanted to go through what my uh, opinion on what why is preparation involves. So this is the mind map, and don't forget, if you're looking for copies of the mind maps, and you're not, if you if you're in my um, classes, you should have a copy of this already on Moodle. Um, if you're um, not in my class, you can get copies of the mind maps by emailing me at pmcbrunner at, G, at um, iCloud, sorry, um, dot com, and um, you can purchase them. So here is uh, very quickly a breakdown of the team and issue mode for me. And again, this idea of preparation being key is very, very important to this section. You can't just make it up. So we know it's one of the three modes that will be examined. And you know for a fact that there will be two team and issue questions on your paper this year. So if you choose to answer on team and issue, you will have to answer one question on it. So six comparative questions, two of them will be on team and issue. So if you're going for that, you have to answer one question. I'm often asked, my teachers pick this team. Is this, is this a terrible team? There's no such thing as a, as a wrong team. Oh, my teacher picked this theme. It's too, uh, it's too simplistic. No, it's not. It depends on how you write about it. You know, there's no too simplistic team. I mean, if you look at Macbeth, Macbeth is, is about ambition. That's a pretty simplistic team. It's about the complexity of human relationships, the relationship between Macbeth and his wife and the relationship between Macbeth and his country and the relationship between, you know, good and evil. So complexities of relationships is a great theme to do for any um, texts. You, it's, it's the quality of your analysis that matters, not the, you know, complexity of the team. Again, like everything else I've always said to you, if you're doing preparation, study past questions, look at, you know, accessible questions that were asked in the past and map out how you would use your information to support them. That's, that's your, your starting point is know your material. And then let's look at questions. So look at this one here. This was asked in 2021, the last time Team and Issue was on. Compare the insights. And don't forget, insights is a, re is a key word that comes up all the time in questions and it comes up in poetry questions. So it's, that's things you learn about life. Okay? Things you learn about an aspect of a theme. Compare the insights you gained into the same theme or issue through understanding what influences or motivates one central character from at least one, at least two texts in your comparative course. I have a sample answer done on that um, using my text that I'm doing this year, which are um, Fill It Out Here I Come and Ladybird and Educated. Anyway, uh, when making one or more key decisions. That, that, that was a great question. It was a really easy question, insights into the team, with a little twist, you know, motivates a central character. So, you know, these are, you have to think about the, the wording and bring your information around to that particular wording. Remember, you will be told by teachers that it's perfectly okay to um, answer or write comparative essays with no quotation. That's true. But as I've said to you many times, for me, an essay which has some quotation, um, all other things being equal in terms of depth and quality and so on, will be better than an essay that has no quotation. So you've got plenty of time. If you're in my classes, you have the, the, the doc, the notes on your comparative texts, most of them. Um, and therefore, you know, what excuses do you have? Learn a few quotes to back your key moments up. When you're doing your preparation for your theme, try and pick three different elements of your theme and have those prepared across your texts. So, for example, if, for example, the theme is power. I like that theme. It's something that is, um, is notable in almost every text. And think about in your preparation. Have key moments which show who holds power. Somebody being powerful, um, exercising their power. Then think about the power balance or imbalance in a text. Who has power? Who doesn't have power? Why do some characters not have power? Is it because they're women? Think about Doll's House or Handmaid's Tale. Is it because they're children? Think about All the Light You Cannot See or even Philadelphia Here I Come where the central character is essentially a, an infantilized um, adult man. Um, but think about what makes people powerful, what, what makes people lack power. And then what is the, is there any evidence of the abuse of power? You know, is there any evidence of people in a powerful position using that power in a way which negatively impacts on others? And there's loads of texts on the course this year where you see that. 
or need are there people in the text who use their power for good look at marion in ladybird i know loads of you are studying ladybird look at rosie in that film two two matriarchs two women two mothers who who use what little power they have to try and protect their families and guide their families you know through the storms that life is thrown against them so different elements of your team and so if you're looking for who has power you have a key moment in each of the three texts or two of the if you're only doing two texts have a key moment which shows them being powerful is there anybody who lacks power have a key moment which shows their you know their the their lack of power or does somebody have power and then lose it so you're looking at different elements of the team one key moment per text for each aspect of your team and one of the things i want to hammer into you is if your teacher is a good teacher i'm sure the vast majority of you have excellent teachers they're probably doing prep work with you on a team and you might all be doing the same team in class and the really good teacher will you know have the key moments ready but try to make sure you don't just keep on writing about the same key moments as everybody else originality is key here show you've done the work don't forget like you're supposed this is supposed to be a section which encouraged you to pick your own books and and read them now that got abandoned 20 years ago that that idea was a brilliant idea but the reality of how schools work and how classrooms work and how motivated most students are meant that it fell to the teacher to pick the three texts so if you want to score well make sure if you're writing about the same team as your classmates which is absolutely fine make sure that you populate your essay with evidence that suggests that you've done your work yourself that differentiates your work and don't learn wrote learn sample answers no matter how good they are you know no matter how well they fit with a question it's never a good idea because it just it's not your work and we're looking for your work i think it's important that you when you think about the team that you're going to answer on that has to have some degree of being relatable universal and the reason i think that's because the types of questions they ask so things like identity as i said complexity of relationships deception power loyalty and betrayal discrimination redemption communication they're all you know good choices for teams and the reason they are is because you know i went back scrolled or trawled back through years and years and years of questions and look at the types of things they ask you about in the team question so when you're doing your preparation think your chosen material would allow you to talk about the following things why your team might be relevant to the world in which we live today why one text might address your team in a way which is more entertaining that was a hard question it was more of a literary genre question um why your team might be emotionally engaging what does that mean you know grabs you and moves you and angers you or you know forces you to look at the world from different perspectives surprises you and um, how the behavior and motivation of characters help you uncover insights so if you're studying i don't know what did i recently do i did recently did a note on tribes nina rain's play if you're studying tribes and there's a moment in that text when billy decides he's not going to speak with his family anymore other than true sign language why is that why does he do that like if, if you're looking to say a communication in that or again power or simply relationships in that text if you're doing something i know a lot of people are doing maybe a doll's house like why does nora walk out on torval at the end of the play why does he keep on calling her little at the start of the play if you're studying, I'm trying to think of other texts that I know are very popular. If you're studying um, Philadelphia Here I Come, which I know is very popular this year, why does um, Gar try to get his dad to talk about the trip to Loch Ness Loch Core when, when he was a child? Why, why does that happen? You know, and, and then what insights do you le learn into you know, communication? When you see Gar struggling so much, trying to communicate with his father, what do you learn about the importance of communication within family units or indeed what do you learn about family you know i've mentioned purple hibiscus is another text that people have asked me about you know the toxic relationship the father that dominates that family unit in that novel you know he's not a million miles away in terms of the damage he does from sb or indeed from christopher and tribes or indeed from torvald in in a doll's house so that idea of like within a family having a, a toxic presence which causes harm and you know 
makes you think about the importance of kindness and how authority should be wielded or used and how our words impact on those that we love and how important it is to communicate there's loads of thematic insights and those are like valuable life lessons and don't forget very very important if you have if you're looking at a theme that you think with different perspectives on the theme so from the from the point of view of different characters great example of that is, is hunger hunger is a a, 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 a um a movie which you know deals with the idea of sacrifice and deals with the idea of of um individuality and you know bobby trying to stand up as an individual against the machine um of the prison system of identity so you know do you learn much bobby sands is a very controversial figure do you learn much about that team from looking at the world through his perspective and then when he sits down he has that long monologue with father dom do you learn much you know about the perspective on what bobby's trying to do from father dom's perspective so those are some of the issues so hopefully that'll give you better insight into what you need to be doing in terms of team and issue maybe not um i'm going to follow up with a video i'm going to keep stop this one now but in which i look at this question um and this question is compare the insights you gained into the same team or issue through understanding what influences or motivates one central character from at least two texts in your comparative course when making one key decision. Develop your response with reference to your chosen texts. And with that one, I'm going to refer to Philadelphia Here I Come and Ladybird. But again, that'll be at a later date. Thank you.